Hello, this is Dr. Bill Cardoso from Creative Electron. Today, our VP of Marketing, Dr. Glenn Thomas, will review with you how X-ray systems are used to inspect printed circuit boards and other electronics. Glenn? Essentially, in uh, electronics, what we're doing is, so is solder joint integrity. We're looking at voiding in solder joints. Uh, the majority of X-rays taking, uh, even though we can do uh, printed, you know, PCB, printed circuit board, multi-layer board, so we can look at vias, we can look at traces, uh, we can look at registration inside of the printed circuit board. Typically, all printed circuit board manufacturers, um, then when they decide where they're going to drill the, uh, the through holes, those through holes are all based, and their location is based on x-rays. Uh, essentially, you'll take a multiple... Uh, image and you'll look at the multiple layers and then you'll compromise so that you don't break out of one of the vias inside of the, the circuit board. But in most cases we're looking at solder joint integrity or we're looking at a lack of solder joint or an excess of, of a lack of solder or an excess of solder in the solder joint. Uh, in the case of lack of solder what we're going to see is a lot of voiding. Uh, voiding is unacceptable, is ex going to be in all solder joints, uh, you can't get rid of voiding 100% based on the fact that it's, uh, it's a gas is escaping as you heat the uh, solder flux. So there's not much you can do about getting rid of them uh, completely. Uh, to have a solder joint with no solder voiding is kind of rare. It's kind of a hard thing to accomplish. But you can control the amount of solder voiding you get in the the you know, voiding in general uh, based on your solder application, your solder uh, masks, and your uh, temperature profiles. So essentially on all the different components you're looking at internal, uh, you know, inside the solder joint you're looking at, there are actually three areas in a solder joint that we're looking at. We're looking at the heel, the toe, and the fillet. And essentially all solder joints have that uh, characteristic. And if you, um, you get pretty familiar with looking at the heel, uh, you can see that you have a good solder joint. If you look at the fillet, there's a nice radiant uh, gray scale from the, f f the toe to the heel. Uh, we can show you how to look for that, and you can actually see that pretty easily once someone points it out. So essentially, there are a couple key components in x-ray imaging that we're looking for when we say we're going to look at a solder joint. Uh, okay, essentially, in, if you take a look at a PCB, what we're looking at here is we're looking at uh, multiple components. We're looking at, at a couple um, ICs. We're looking at the solder joints attaching those ICs to the substrate. And then we're looking at the vias. Um, we're looking at uh, quite a few through holes. And essentially, um, when you look at an x-ray, you can see all the way through the part. So what we're doing here is we're seeing parts that are on top of the board based on uh, you know, this image. You can see that they're all pretty much on top of the board. There's nothing underneath it looks like. Um, that's one of the biggest questions in x-raying a sample is uh, how do I know if it's underneath the circuit board or on top? Uh, and that's pretty easy to train someone using a, uh, a standard water glass, a glass with a couple of dots on it. It's pretty easy to, to show you someone how to look at parts and understand if they're on the top or the bottom. And essentially what you're going to look for in this case is size. Um, parts that are closer to the x-ray tube will be a, a little bit larger in magnification. Not much, but a little larger. Parts that are farther away from the x-ray tube closer to the detector will be smaller. So I can determine, and based on the penumbra in the cone of the beam, I can look at that and I can help you determine that if it's on the top or the bottom. So that's pretty straightforward. You don't necessarily need a uh, $400,000 x-ray machine to show you that things are on the top or the bottom. Little oblique angle viewing and you can, uh, you can look at almost everything necessary on a circuit board to evaluate solder joint integrity. Uh, BGAs, uh, another one of those things that uh, you definitely, you can look at um, 
probably 80% of the problems you have with BGAs you can look at from a top-down view, a standard 2D view. Essentially in that we're looking for the size of the solder balls, the general shape of the solder balls, we're looking at some percentage of voiding, we're looking at bridges, and we're looking at overall, just uh, the general overall size. If you have one corner of a BGA that has large balls, uh, the corner opposite that has a smaller diameter balls, you may have a lifted component, uh, you may have some solder paste issues. Uh, essentially, when we do an oblique angle, what we're doing is we magnify the image and then we rotate the x-ray detector. Uh, that gives us an oblique angle view. And what that does is lets me see the solder fillets. Um, I can see where the solder is actually melted and attached to the substrate. And uh, we've got some images later that will give you a lot better idea as far as magnification and clarity. But essentially, if you were looking at a head and pillow issue, uh, what you would see is the solder balls as they are now in an oblique angle. And it would look kind of like a mushroom cloud. Um, you would have a column, and that column would be uh, intruding into the ball itself. And typically, um, you don't necessarily have to see a head and pillow or know that it's a head and pillow, uh, but it's based on the uh, profile that you're actually looking at when you look at the balls. And uh, we'll point out some later in the few slides on that give you an idea as far as uh, what you mean by the profile. Because if you look at all of these balls, they look more or less the same shape, same size. Uh, there's no real apparent voiding. You do have a little bit of voiding, but nothing major. Uh, when you do see a ball that has major issues like the head and pillow or uh, serious solder problems. They're pretty easy to pick out. Our software can pick those out fairly fast and accurately, but if you don't have our software, we can teach an operator to see those pretty easily as well. Uh, again, this is voiding. Uh, essentially, uh, what we're doing here is uh, this is actually, uh, I would say those are not actual solder joints as much as those are the voiding you're seeing in the solder paste itself. Uh, you can actually look at your solder paste and determine how much voiding you have in the solder paste. And you can uh, look at your applications. Uh, one of the big things is uh, solder paste inspection. Uh, one of the advantages of x-ray is that you can, can do solder paste inspection pre-reflow. So you can actually look at it and you can get in a pretty good idea as far as contamination. And um, as far as application as well. So you could um, test the uh, screen printing process prior to reflow and give you a general idea as far as uh, solder joint integrity. If you added some uh, automated inspection, you could go through a circuit board and look at key areas um, and determine your solder paste integrity uh, prior to reflow. You wouldn't want to do it on a 100% basis, but if you had just uh, installed a new screen or if you have a new circuit board that you're actually putting together to start producing, then you might want to look at the solder paste integrity and the solder paste application post, you know, prior to reflow and then look at it post reflow and that'll give you a general idea as far as how much uh, contamination you may or may not have or what type of wetting you have in your uh, solder paste applications. X-rays are nothing but density representations. Uh, we're essentially looking at density. In this case, we're looking at a positive view. If you're looking at X-ray film, that's typically a negative view. So positive, what we're doing is when we see a lack of density, we see a brighter, lighter grayscale. Uh, heavy density would be black. Um, so if you look at those four solder pads, the white spots that you see in those solder pads, those would be voiding. Um, if you look at the first three solder, or actually if you look at all four, the first one on the right is a darker solder pad. If you look at that, you can see that it has a few dots, white dots in it, but it is a darker color. Uh, it's a darker shade of gray compared to the other three. That means that it would have a, a higher density so you have more solder paste on that lead than you do the other 
three. Uh, but the one in the uh, this next one over from the right, that has the largest amount of voiding inside. You've got three large balls, and then you've got some micro voiding around the edges. Um, typically, our software, uh, if you have any decent BGA software or solder void analysis software, it will pick the voiding up much better than the visual representation. Uh, we can see about 256 shades of gray. Uh, it's a human eye. It's not really that uh, well adapted at looking at grayscale. Uh, you can get pretty good with a lot of experience, but with a software program, it will look at the grayscale intensities on a pixel level. So it can pick out uh, one shade of gray difference. So if you set your tolerances and you want to look at one shade of gray difference, it could actually pick that up on a pixel by pixel basis. So you could get a, a like if you look at the third solder joint over, um, with that one you have a lot of micro voiding. Uh, you actually may have a failure on that solder joint, more so than the one next to it that has the three large solder ball or solder voids, based on the fact that it's all micro. It's very poros, you know, it has a lot of porosity inside. It's a lot of, it's very porous. It's not a solid solder joint. I would say that that would be a worse solder joint than the one with the three voids, just based on the fact that you have so much small micro voiding. Um, you know, it creates a lot of mechanical stresses. There's really no attachment. So voiding is uh, essentially the white uh, dots that you see inside. Uh, this is a higher magnification of some BGA issues. Uh, this would be similar to what you would see in a head and pillow. If you look at the four balls, you see the one on the right lower section. Uh, that could possibly have a pillar uh, effect in the BGA ball itself. Um, there's a possibility that you actually have a short between the two. Uh, if you were to take that image and rotate it a bit more with the tilt, uh, that would help separate those two balls and give you a general idea of whether they were actually connected and shorted. Uh, but in either case, both of them have solder pad and solder paste issues. Uh, if you look at the ball on the left lower corner, you will see that you have a ball. It's a definite sphere. And then you can see the pad underneath that sphere. So that would be a, uh, a definite open. I wouldn't trust that solder ball at all. Um, but the, the, you would have to have a reason to have that type of app uh, problem. Uh, if it's not a mechanical failure uh, of the balls that were damaged prior to the component being placed, I would say that's probably a solder application, a solder paste application issue. Uh, because you've got some migration of the solder as well as uh, inconsistencies in the solder pad to uh, component or ball. You know, uh, you got some definite issues there. But it, with, the, with that image, you can actually go back and you can rotate a small amount and uh, use the rotation of the x-ray uh, or the tilt of the x-ray detector and then uh, if you had a system that had a 360 degree table, essentially you could pin that tilt at, the, at a set degree, say 40 degrees, and then you could rotate your table 360 degrees and walk around those components. So right now we're looking at the lower uh, quadrant, lower left quadrant of the ball. If you were to rotate that board without tilting, changing your tilt, 360 degrees, you would start looking all around those four balls and you could actually see from the other side whether they're connected or um, they have issues as well. And you could also see if you had a uh, bridge in there. So you could really analyze that by using the tilt and 360 degree rotation. But that 360 degree rotation would have to be on a, the same plane, X, Y plane. Uh, you don't want to rotate it like you're, uh, you know, hold it up in the air and rotate it. You have to have a flat plane rotation. Uh, same thing here. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, we can look at solder joint integrity as uh, typical, you know, x-ray. We can actually look at um, 
using x-ray you can look at the pad and registration issues uh, if you have a lifted pad those are pretty hard to see but typically uh, we're looking at comparisons to does that pad look like all of the other pads essentially that's what you're learning to do is look at uh, similarities to the um, you know, do all of the solder leads and solder joints look like they're supposed to look? Do they all look the same? Is there one that looks different than the others? Essentially, uh, that's what we're looking for is a difference. Uh, if you have components, you could get tombstone components. You can get other components uh, underneath the board. Uh, in this case, a lot of times what you may have is you have your component mounted or your circuit board mounted into a chassis and uh, maybe a component has fallen off the board and dropped down in the chassis and is shorting things out. You could definitely see that you have a component that's misplaced. It's not supposed to be there. If you look at the power component on the right upper image, you'll see that you have some debris in there. Uh, you've got some uh, solder debris. That debris uh, is not a good thing to have in the board, but even worse, it's underneath the component. So if you um, get some jostling, somebody drops the part, uh, drops the board, drops the cell phone, those solder balls can migrate and short out uh, components. Uh, the problem with solder balls, when they do short out a component, by the time it gets back to you for an R&D um, or a, a failure analysis, that solder ball might have fallen out and is gone. So you're looking for something that's not even there anymore. You have a component that shorted out. You really don't know why it shorted out or why you had a failure. But uh, you know, it all goes back to your basic uh, inspection and your basic process control. If you didn't have all those solder balls and all that uh, miscellaneous debris underneath your components, uh, you wouldn't have had a problem to begin with. So using the x-ray in the beginning to look at it and say we have some manufacturing problems we need to fix prior to shipping it really does make uh, a big difference. Uh, you can have solder debris under components and you can do an electrical test and they're going to test just fine. You can do a visual test with your AOI and it's going to test no problems. But um, knowing that there's solder you know, debris underneath the component could it definitely affect its outcome and its life expectancy. And the real problem is when it comes back to you, you still don't have a clue on why it failed. Um, if you were to take this image and you were put it in your database and you compare this image to an image five years from now and some of that debris is misplaced and it's gone now, that would give you a pretty good idea. This is a, another application where we're looking at uh, inside of components. Um, as components are manufactured, essentially what you'll do is you will set the die, uh, then you'll use a machine to put the wires in place. Uh, the tensions on those wires, the wire sweep is critical in the stresses. So we can look at the little end. Uh, if you have a wire, a bond wire, and your machine is not cutting the bond wire off properly, um, if you blow uh, this component up, essentially you can see it looks like a fuse. Essentially you can see that the, uh, the bond wires inside the component have disintegrated or broken. Uh, we can see cracks. If you overheat the component, you could see cracks in the die surface. And in the uh, encapsulant, you could see cracks. Uh, again, you can see solder voiding. Another, that's a big one in all of it is uh, the ability to see voiding. Uh, if you have a lot of voiding in the encapsulant, that will tend to give you an idea as far as uh, whether it's a counterfeit component or possibly it's a uh, component that has been overheated, uh, hasn't been stored properly. Uh, there are a lot of uh, applications and a lot of things we can look at in with x-ray in an individual component to help you determine uh, kind of its lineage. If it's uh, uh, if it's been stored properly, if it's been mounted properly, if it's uh, you know a power issue, or if it's a mechanical stress issue, we can look at those issues as well. Uh, building the ICs, we can look at the uh, the amount of sweep and the amount of pressure as you uh, fill the uh, the IC. Uh, 
you can build the substrates uh, when you mount it. So there are all kinds of different applications in uh, for individual components themselves. Uh, inspection of uh, printed circuit boards with EMI shields and other uh, things in general. Uh, once you put the product together, we could actually evaluate the product as a whole, or you could evaluate the individual components. Um, all of them, uh, x-ray really doesn't matter uh, what you have over the top. Um, if you were looking at something with a vision system, you're worried about the proper lighting. You're worried about um, the ability of uh, reflections. Um, X-ray doesn't have any of those issues. There are no lighting issues. There are no reflection issues. Not that uh, the end user has to worry about. We have to worry about it at a later point, but it's not a, uh, that's a manufacturing part of a concept called scatter. But essentially, if you have a component and you want to X-ray it, we can X-ray it. Um, you can see through it. You don't have to do any special processing. So essentially, in this case, you could see that there is a short. Uh, there's a, uh, a big solder blob essentially uh, that solder joint uh, that solder had to come from somewhere and typically that would be a solder paste issue um, solder just doesn't flow from places uh, essentially if you overheat it it might migrate but that would probably be a solder paste issue it might be a single issue or it may be an issue across the board that you have uh, an ongoing issue uh, using x-ray, you may have been able to fix that problem because your solder masks and your solder uh, application, your solder paste application, uh, would probably degrade over time. And you would see that solder blob getting larger and larger and larger based on the solder mask or the solder paste application. Um, so you, you could fix this problem if you were actually tracking it prior to you would be able to see that you had a problem and fix it before it became a major failure. Thanks, Kalan. If you'd like more information about this topic or anything else related to x-rays, please contact us at 760-752-1192 or uh, check us up online at creativeelectron.com. Thanks. Yeah.